Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Laksamana of the Mines and Geosciences Bureau Central Office. Do you have any idea what geologic hazards or geohazards mean? Geohazards are natural hazards which results from geologic phenomena such as landslides, earthquakes, and floods. How do we differentiate hazard from risk? Hazard is the probability of an event occurring, while risk is the potential for economic loss for individual locations, communities, or even wider areas. Here's a cartoon example differentiating a hazard from a risk. Take note of the first photo where a rock will fall, defining hazard, while on the other picture, a rock will fall that can harm the couple passing by, thus defining risk. Here are some common examples we experience in our country, such as a Cherry Hills landslide, the earthquake in Baguio Park Hotel in 1990, Common floods in Malabon area. Knowing and identifying the different hazards common in our country is a key and vital step to reduce loss of life and property damage. This is a facade of a school built on an old landslide material in Mangkayan Benguet. Mass movement and landslide hazards. Landslide is the sliding of mass of soil or rock on or from a sloping ground. Landslide is a reaction to gravity. It is often triggered by various conditions such as heavy rainfall, earthquake, poor vegetation, and human modification of land. Some natural factors of landslides are weak soil and rock material, fractured rocks, sloping ground, shallow rooted vegetation, and rapid erosion. Some human causes of landslides are excavation of the slope, construction of houses on steep slopes, deforestation, poor upland agricultural practices, poor mining practices, and water leakage from utilities. Here's a landslide affecting a school building in Mangkayan Benguet due to slope instability. A landslide due to heavy rainfall where an evidence of the brief flow occurred at Barangay Katbawan, Pinuyan, Panaon Island. Here's a landslide that happened in Cherry Hills due to human modification. Another landslide due to construction of houses on steep slopes causing slope failure. The second most Common geohazard is flooding and tidal hazards. The natural causes of floods are heavy rainfall, high tide levels, storm, typhoon surges, lowering of ground due to earthquakes, and melting of the earth's snow and ice caps. Floods have different causes. First, we have the man made causes due to dam failures blockage of waterways by garbage and buildings, improper design of street drainage. The types of floods are as follows. Sheet floods, which has long duration, it covers wide areas and has low current or standing water. Flash floods have short duration, it covers narrow areas and has low to strong deadly current. Another type of flood is coastal flooding. This has a short duration, it covers limited to wide areas, it has a standing water or tidal floods, and has a moderate to strong waves due to tsunamis and storm surges. Next slide would present scenarios of coastal erosion. Here's a coastal erosion occurring in Santa Ilocos Sur. Another view of Santa Ilocos Sur coastal erosion. Now we go to subsidence. Subsidence is the lowering of the land surface caused by a variety of man-made and natural causes. It may be slow or abrupt. Some natural causes are underground erosion or rapid groundwater flow, ground shaking due to strong vibrations by earthquakes, 
and natural compaction of soil due to passage of time. Some man-made causes are as follows. Overpumping of groundwater, construction of heavy infrastructures on soft soil, ground shaking due to human activities like prolonged blasting, and extraction of natural gas. Here's an evidence of subsidence where a tilted house in San Pedro, Laguna is observed. This is caused by differential subsidence due to loading upon soft soil. Take note of the tilted door. This is another site of subsidence due to collapsing caves in Baguio City in a car's terrain. Here's a collapsing caves in Dumanhug, Cebu. Note the road that collapsed for 50 meters. Now let us discuss earthquake hazards and under this topic, liquefaction and lateral spread are included. Here is a lateral spread in Tayug, Pangasinan due to earthquake. Road destruction is apparent. Let us now know the meaning of liquefaction. It is a phenomenon where a soil's strength and stiffness are reduced by ground vibration caused by earthquakes. It can also be explained simply by comparing it to a granular solid material wherein it is transformed into a substance with the physical properties of a fluid. This photo shows the brown grains representing sand particles while the blue color represents the fluids. During earthquake, these particles tend to realign themselves into a more stable condition and fluids are squeezed out, thereby resulting to loss of bearing capacity of the sand. This is an experiment simulating a building constructed over saturated sands. The building and the sand are placed over a shaking table simulating an earthquake. The shaking causes liquefaction, resulting to the loss of bearing capacity of the sand. The last topic is about volcanic hazards. Volcanoes give rise to numerous geologic and hydrologic hazards. Active volcanoes are closely monitored by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. PBOX issue warnings of impending eruptions or other hazardous events. Volcanic hazards are brought about by the eruption of active volcanoes. The two types are flowing volcanic hazards that occur close to the ground, and examples of this are lava flows, pyroclastic flows, and lahars. The other one is the non-flowing volcanic hazards that include volcanic bombs or lavas thrown out into the air and ash falls. Other related hazards caused by volcanic eruptions are earthquakes, tsunamis, thunderstorms, acid rains, and emission of poisonous gases. This slide shows the different damages caused by a non-flowing volcanic hazard. Take note of the ash-laden cars and the roof collapse on hangars. This is in Clark Air Base, Pampanga. This exhibits the extent of affected area in Bambantarlac during the 1991 Mount Pinatuba eruption. On 17th of July, you can still see the bridge but on mid-September of 1991, it was totally covered by lahar. Here is a typical example of flowing volcanic hazards in Mount Mayon of the Bicol region. Take note of the pyroclastic flows. The different hazards discussed pose a real and serious threat to our country, requiring government planners, scientists, and engineers to consider our safety. Therefore, knowing and identifying these hazards are essential to reduce risk of loss of properties and lives. Thank you.